Hello guys and good evening. I welcome you all to this webinar session, Content-Based Image Retrieval System using MATLAB. Myself, uh, Dr. Mahantesh, Associate Professor, SJB Institute of Technology, Bangalore. And this webinar is organized by Merge Intern, which is an AI-based platform for right matchmaking of interns and companies. It's a well curated platform for student internships. It also provides a pre-screening feature that allows better matchmaking for students and companies. Here you have a lot of opportunities in, as they have mentioned, it's an AI based platform. Okay. So <clears throat> to start with uh, this webinar, Today we are going to discuss about a few things. These are the objectives of this session. I'll be introducing what you mean by content-based image retrieval. We'll be comparing with uh, a conventional methods and its applications, and we shall see what are the few existing systems and a general image retrieval system, like an architecture, a very basic level architecture, and we shall try to introduce a machine learning model for content-based image retrieval. And we shall see how a color mean based image retrieval system can be implemented using MATLAB. And uh, finally, at the end of the session, if time permits, we shall see to implement again a simple GI for IRS, that is image retrieval system. So this is my agenda for today's session. <clears throat> So to start with, you might have heard about the saying called a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, you can describe a picture using thousand words. In fact, it evokes the subtle irony to define the same picture in the words. So a picture speaks a thousand words, thousand words. So, and in multimedia content analysis in today's world, there are different real world computer vision applications and in all those applications, digital images constitute a major part of multimedia data. So in last few years, the complexity of multimedia contents, especially the images, has grown exponentially. And on daily basis, more than millions and millions of images are uploaded at different archives such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google database, you name it. Okay. And it becomes a very important in order to search for a relevant image from an archive and it becomes very challenging research problem for computer vision and pattern recognition research community. So with the development of this internet, it has made an enormous increase in the image collection database, metadata base. And this leads to an existence of image retrieval system and has spurred a significant interest in this research community. So that is why I have taken up this issue, the topic of content-based image retrieval system, which is abbreviated as CBIR. And in CBIR and image classification based models, high level image visuals are represented in the form of feature vectors. Okay, so that consists of numerical values. And since we are speaking in terms of numerical values and we have to, uh, uh, we have to realize what is the mathematical tool or the simulation tool which assist this real time data. So there are two conventional methods. So usually this will go hand in hand. Earlier, it used to be a text based image retrieval system and now it has been transformed into a content-based image retrieval system. In text-based image retrieval system, a user query will be a text. Say for example, user has requested for an image retrieval system through a text. And what is the output of text-based image retrieval system? Here you can see user has an intention to view the image of elephants from the large image database. And he has given a keyword called elephant and the retrieved images is of elephant. So this is a text based search. Whereas 
and the content based image retrieval system you can see the input given by the user it's a query text here in text based whereas in content based it is an image and in image it the content based image retrieval system has to extract the features okay we shall talk about features in the next coming slide uh, just here the how this is differentiated from the text based is like you're going to queue an image as an input and thereby you're trying to extract the features extract the content and then again you try to make a, a comparison between the contents which has been extracted by the image and the contents of the image database and retrieve or give the similar images so this is content based i hope uh, it is clear so what is text based and what is content based it is just the user query input depends upon the text and here it depends upon the image and you are going to extract the content and the content plays a major role in order to which plays a significant role to extract and exploit the contents of the image so what is an image content image content can be described in two a major categories like visual in information in terms of features like what human visualize what human can see and the semantics what human perceive or what human intends for so visual information in terms of features can be color shape spatial element location where object is located in a space given space and a texture okay so a color can be of different types again it can be an histogram moments sets how do you extract a color that we shall discuss and in fact i am going to use this color based image retrieval in my uh, matlab illustration or an experiment in coming uh, next uh, uh, after a couple of time and color can be extracted using histogram moments or sets shape can be extracted based upon region based upon local a uh, boundary based or a global uh, based and a texture it's a structural as well as spectral and probab probabilistic model so what is an image content that we are going to speak about here it is color shape or texture and semantics it's a perceptual information about the image so what are the problems faced in feature extraction that is while trying to extract the content trying to extract the feature usually colors get varied with respect to its surface orientation that is one of the challenge or a problem and you can see the same surface is been captured with varying illumination conditions this is very important this is how this things becomes more complicated while before you extract the color feature and you can see the intensity variations there might be a dark room or there might be a moderately illuminated room and so on so this uh, becomes more challenging with surface orientation of any object as well as different uh, varying uh, effect of varying illumination and intensity variations with respect to a color and you can see two things here with respect to shape problems occlusion and different viewpoint for one person it appears to be as a 6 for the other person it appears to be as a 9 so thereby a shape is going to be more challenging extracting or exploiting the shape features is very very important or becomes more problematic and occlusion hiding behind some object or if you are trying to hide yourself behind uh, uh some object so that becomes an occlusion occlusion is nothing but overlapping of the object so that also try distracts the shape mechanism of any image or an object and texture so texture usually gives us a very rare information about the much information about the content but it plays a major role so texture it's very 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 difficult to extract as a feature so with this intent of uh, with these problems if we say so if we succeed in designing a good image retrieval system we shall deal with several applications like you can index huge amount of images like large amount of images by annotations right you can queue you can name the images and it can be used in art collections say for example fine arts museum in san francisco it can be used in crime prevention geographical information and uh, remote sensing systems 
right? Uh, like face recognition, like a, a, a fingerprint recognition, or biometric or iris recognition, and geographical information and remote sensing uh, to uh, to study more about the landscape, to study more about the buildings, to study more about the density or the population, something like that. And medical diagnosis, studying about uh, different uh, uh, medical uh, uh, issues and uh, the World Wide Web, military applications and uh, nowadays it's surveillance applications Why? because many of us are trying to automate or trying to make your surveillance applications or your cameras more intelligent. Okay, So in this situation, like uh, we have to make sure the image which is captured, where the object is present, whether the abnormal uh, activities are going on and to classify abnormal activities from the normal activities or if there is any abandoned objects which is present in the site or location. So there are more number of problems in surveillance application. All these applications can be achieved. All these applications can be easily implemented if you are good in these issues, like addressing these problems. Okay, uh, that is problems in feature extraction. Uh, coming to few existing systems, uh, we shall discuss more about these few existing systems if time permits at the end of the session. Uh, for right now, you have Yahoo's picture gallery and hotpot, which is a uh, still a keyword based uh, system. Image finder, it's depending on alpha numerical keys, like you can give alphabets as well as numerical. Say, for example, I want an images of two roses or three buses or four airplanes, something like that. And I have a, a ADL that is Alexandria Digital Library, which is based on texture feature. So you give an image as an input, it extract texture, and based upon the texture components present inside the image, the, uh, the images, the similar images will be retrieved from the database. Alta Vista Photo Finder, here it is dependent upon the dominant color and shapes and textures. Suppose if uh, the sky color is blue, and the, obviously the, the blue color is more dominant if you're trying to take a picture of a sky, so, and shape, and texture reasonably. And Berkeley Digital Library Project, that is BDLV, it is based on alpha numeric keys plus 13 different types of colors. Blob world, all these are commercial existing systems. Blob world, color, shape, texture, and location. Blob represents a location and it is used on 10K Coral data set. Netra, IBM, this is based upon the segmentation plus feature contents. So you can find more uh, existing systems. At the end of the session, I'll try to show this. There are so many CBIR engines, but still we have got a lot and lot of problems. Why? Because most of the times images are retrieved, but it has failed semantically. So there is a huge gap between low level image features and high level semantics. What is high level semantics? High level semantics is the one which humans understand, what one which human perceives. What is low level? The one which machine understands, like in terms of ones and zeros. Okay, so there is a huge gap between what machine understands and what human understands. You call it as a semantic gap. And we are trying to fill that gap, semantic gap. We are trying to reduce that gap, okay? Uh, this is how the general image retrieval system looks. Uh, it can be clearly divided into two sections. The first half, I can call it as a, a testing phase. The second half, the lower half, I can call it as a training phase. What I do is I have a large image data database. You can see at the lower half here, that is, it is comprises of many different types of images here. Like if you can say like I have nearly 101 different categories of images. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to read each and every individual images and I try to extract the visual content from the image. Uh, say for example, I extract color features and I create a feature vector with respect to a color feature. So now what is a feature vectors? So I can call it as a feature database here. Why? Because I am trying to deal with the database here. So I say it is a feature database which comprises of a color features of all the images which is present in my database, okay? Now, a user gives an input image, say for example, an airplane. 
Here, if I've used a color features as a visual content descriptor, then here in the feature extraction during the testing phase, again, I extract the same color features. I call it as a feature vector. So this, I call it as a feature extraction phase, feature extraction stage. Now, I have a feature vector here during the testing phase. I have a feature vector database during a training phase. Now, I try to match or I try to find the similarity between the query feature vector as well as the feature vector database. Whichever, whichever has got a least value, I would try to label it as a particular image. Suppose I have a feature vector color uh, features been preserved in feature vectors and I have a color features which is preserved in feature vector database. If I find it very similar and that image will be retrieved. Here I have given some example of the retried images you can see based upon the color I have retrieved a couple of airplane images but I have a retrieved anchor as well as some boat or yeah a boat image also that means these are false retrieved images these are not according to my perception so this phase so but I have six out of eight retrieved correctly Okay. So this is just an example of a uh, general blocks of image retrieval system, which consists of a training phase and a testing phase and a feature extraction. And here I can call this similarity measures, which is trying to measure the similarity, degree of similarity between feature vectors of query as well as database. I call this as a classification stage. Okay. So you have two things. One is feature extraction. The second one is classification. So, uh, and I need to do this mathematical, uh, if I want to simulate, if I want to uh, generate some codes, like if I want to read a couple of images, put it into a feature vector and call it as a feature vector or a feature matrix. And then, uh, uh, I'm trying to find a similar image from the database. So, a sophisticated tool, uh, I will be using a MATLAB. Uh, if you people are an engineering students, I guess you, people, uh, you guys might be uh, quite familiar with this MATLAB tool uh, as an introduction. It is a high level language for numerical computation. MATLAB is derived from the word matrix laboratory. Okay. Uh, whatever computations that you carry out in this MATLAB will be in terms of a matrix or an array in terms of rows and columns. Right. So, a MATLAB combines a desktop environment. It can be uh, tuned for iterative analysis and a design process. It expresses in matrix. It provides vast library of mathematical functions. It has got a huge, uh, equipped with a huge amount of library functions like uh, signal processing, image processing, statistical tools, statistical signal processing tools, control systems, right? There are so many uh, mathematical functions, libraries. Uh, and also it includes the live editor for creating scripts. It can combine code, output, and formatted text in ex executable notebook. And also it provides functions for integrating C, Java, .NET, Microsoft, Excel, and Python, uh, you name it. You can integrate your uh, .m files, that is MATLAB files, along with uh, the other most uh, popular programming uh, platforms. Yeah, this is a desktop of the MATLAB. This is how it appears. If you click on MATLAB icon application, uh, you shall get this window. And this window, you need to observe a couple of things. The one is directory. The directory, like uh, the location where you are working, in which folder you are located. This is a command window. Okay, this is a heart or CPU of MATLAB, and this is an editor window where you can create your programs, you can edit your uh, files, and this is a workspace where it will notify what variables of what size of what dimensions has been used in your program. Okay, so this is a, a live editor, this is a compiler, and this is an editor window. Okay, and MATLAB applications, uh, I am just going uh, running very quickly through this uh, theoretical aspects to jump into the uh, most practical aspects right? because I want to show it on live so that how you can create your own image virtual systems or search engines.
at, uh, at the earliest stages. So MATLAB uh, uh, can be widely used as a computational tools in science and engineering, physics, chemistry, math, statistics, biological, computational finance, test and measurement, image video processing, signal processing and communication. There are wide variety of applications that you can do in MATLAB. See, if anything is a data, anything is a data, you can deal using MATLAB. If, if you give any query, anything you want to compute with respect to the data. And the whole world is depending upon the data. Why? Because nowadays you see, uh, mm -hmm. what is a data? Like data is a new fuel to any industry in the, during this uh, uh, industry 4.0. Okay. Uh, yeah, these are some examples of large data sets. I've just tried to collect a couple of uh, popular, most popular data sets where the research uh, is going on. It's a hot research topic is going on. This is an image net. And uh, this is an omniglot, which is of uh, character recognition, aircraft, uh, military application, birds, uh, texture. Uh, this is a handwritten drawing. See, image retrieval system not only uh, takes input as a synthetic image, but also it takes a hand-drawn images also. You just simply sketch an image which you're trying to, which you're looking for from a large database. You just draw it. So that will be based upon the shape. Definitely there is no color and texture. So completely based upon the shape, the particular images will be retrieved. So it may be a handwritten or a quick draw, uh, fungi, VGG flower, traffic signs, okay, MS Coco database. And this is my interested database, which is CalTech 101 or 256. This 101 represents 101 different categories of images and 256 represents 256 different categories of images. So it is a huge database with nearly uh, 30 to 40,000 images. And in each category, you have nearly 40 to 800 images under each category. Okay. So I'll be using this CalTech 101 256 data set in order to experiment, to run the uh, program of color-based image retrieval system. To introduce a machine learning model, uh, for content-based image retrieval system. As I've told earlier, any content-based image retrieval system can be divided into two phases. One is training phase, the second one is prediction phase. Uh, so this is a supervised learning-based model. Here, training phase includes uh, database images with labels. So with labels, I am going to train my machine using some machine learning algorithms. I give label, I give features, I say, this feature belongs to this particular label and I assign the, it is nothing but a label to feature mapping, okay? I have three set of features, I have labels. So I have this trained model now. With this training phase, I'll be having a trained model. Prediction phase, uh, assuming a user is trying to give or uh, a query image, from the query image, you'll be extracting the same feature which has been extracted during training phase. And then features are extracted. And here in the trained classifier, what is that I'm trying to do? I'm trying to assign the label, which is most similar to my trained image or trained feature database. So I'll be finally assigning the label. Suppose I have one to 101 labels during training or learning process. I have seen 101 objects, different types of objects in my lifetime. And I'll be uh, trying to label those objects in terms of its features okay based upon the feature i would like to label it suppose if i ask you people to imagine a car so everybody would have imagined with their own uh, imagination uh, with their own uh, observation what you have made in your previous days so somebody might have imagined red car or a green car or a black car so it all depends so it is depending upon so likewise you have different set of object different type set of impressions been made in your a brain or end has been stored in a memory, right? And now all those things has been labeled based upon the features. Just like that, I have been trained this model based upon its feature. Finally, what did you get? I got an image of, I got a label of that image of a query image. So I'll be using color based, color mean based image retrieval. Uh, so let me directly go to the MATLAB and just try to do some basics of image processing. Otherwise, you'll not understand these stages. Remember this training phase, testing phase. I'll be reading images, uh, database images, 
and i'll be extracting color means from all those images and i'll be preserving those color means into a matrix okay and then i'll go through the query image and extract the same color mean and generate feature vector and calculate the distance between a uh, feature vector and feature database and finally assign the label almost similar to your machine learning model okay so this is a simple gui let us uh, look at the end of the session whether if time permits we shall create the gui model now this is a, a matlab desktop i hope uh, we can see this desktop just uh, type ps yes. if you could uh, see let us just try to make it okay yeah so now uh, this is my command window where i'll be typing the comments S uh, suppose if uh, if you want to read uh, an image so i have a function called i am read okay i have a function called i am read so the say a is equal to i am read i am not going with um, there are so many of the basic commands like i want to clear the screen and uh, using clc i want to clear the previously used variables can you see my uh, right side of the workspace there are so many variables been used uh, previously i just if i want to clear all those variables because i'll be using uh, these variables again in my program but it's still it is present on my workspace so what i do i can be using uh, clear all so if i say clear all all my workspace variables will get uh, uh, reset like uh, Uh, it will be removed okay i think you can see the workspace the all my variables has been cleared now if uh, i have to read an image in a matlab so there is a function called i am read and i have to assign it to another variable so i can say i am read and directly uh, uh specify the path from where you want to read that image okay say i have uh, my image uh, data set which has been uh, stored uh, which has been stored in a folder yeah let me show the data set also if you can see the data set here this is a caltech 101 data set it's very similar to your 256 the only difference is uh, i have 101 different categories here the first image the first category is Uh, an accordion it's which is a musical instrument and i have uh, the second image which is an airplane like i have you can see the uh, the file name uh, just uh, look at the file name i have uh, 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 given the file name as 2i that means it belong to the category 2 and 81v it different uh, it it defines 81st view of the second category image likewise if you come to the next class or the next category class and category are one and the same can be used interchangeably here yeah i have the third category that is an anchor image and the 11b is nothing but it's a 11th version or the 11th view of the third category likewise i have 4 5 6 and if i come down i have 101 different categories which is the last category is a spanner and uh, i have 40 say the minimum is 40 and the maximum is 800 images under each category i have 9166 uh, images which is present inside this data set now if i want to read any image from this data set so what i need to do i have to go to this path and then make sure that you are going to read your uh, any image by its file name so i'll specify the path so i'll just say direct my matlab command uh, using matlab commands go to a particular folder and uh, read the second class second view uh, followed by its the format followed by its format a very important the file name along with its format so this is how i read 
an image in the MATLAB. 2i underscore 2v, I am trying to read the second class, second v. Okay. And see, now I've read the image and I've stored it in a variable called a. So now what is a? One second, it's taking some time. Yeah. So now what is a? Can you see in the workspace now? You can see the value of that variable, the value of that variable A, it is a matrix, okay, with the size 184 cross 401 cross 3. What is 184? 184 is rows, 401 is columns, and 3. 3 is nothing but the size of the matrix. There are three such matrices. If I put size of A, size is again another function, and if I say size of A, size of A is 184 cross 401 cross 3. So what is, uh, if I want to view that image, I have a function called I am show, I am show A. What is A now? A is the image which has been read and I am show is a function. If you want to view that image, use the function called I am show A. So what is that three now? So the three few people are aware of, uh, a basic image processing applications or if you know digital image processing yeah so this is a figure one so which has been displayed which has been called from a particular folder and i have displayed that image okay which was present in that folder now this is of size 184 rows and 401 columns see here the width is large and three three is nothing but three different color components an image can be created. Any color represented in image is the formation of three primary colors, R, G, and B, red, green, and blue. And any matrix element here, suppose A of, see here, I will type A of, uh, say, uh, yeah, if I just simply say A and uh, let it go, you can see there is huge number of data, huge amount of data has been running on the screen. So that is a representation of the pixel values. So now if I say, uh, uh, let me go back to uh, my original commands. So I had A, and I had size of A. Uh, if I want, to see the matrix, so these three components are nothing but red, green, and blue. Any image is made up of three matrices. So let me just try to reduce the size of this matrix and show it to you. Uh, let me say a underscore uh, mm, resize, okay, a underscore resize. So I, I resize this image using I am resize function. See, I am using these functions. Any functions will be followed by the common braces. A underscore resize, sorry, A underscore resize is equal to I am resize. What I want to resize? I want to resize A. I want to reduce it to what size? I want to reduce it to 10 cross 10. I am trying to reduce my image, which is of 184 cross 401 columns, okay? size image into 10 cross 10. It will be very simple now to make an analysis. Okay. So now uh, let me clear the screen. Now what is A underscore resize? Now I have a resized image. Can you see this? I have a resized image. The first matrix with all rows and all columns. The colon colon is nothing but all rows and all columns. First matrix, which is of red component, will have these elements. Likewise, green call, uh, green matrix will have these elements. This is the second matrix. Whereas the third matrix, I will be having these elements. Can I call this first matrix as a red component? Can I call this second matrix as a green component? Can I call this third matrix as a blue component? This colon is nothing but all rows, all columns, and the third matrix. Okay. Can I say now, uh, red is equal to, I hope you are following this, red is equal to A underscore resize, okay, of all rows, comma, all columns, comma, one. Can I call it as red now? Yeah, okay. Now this, can I call it as uh, the green matrix? I'm going discrete, okay. I'm just trying to define a variables to this matrix. That's it. Okay. Blue is equal to 
Again, score resize. What I need to do a sorry. The same thing, I just uh, define a variable, that's it. So you understood this. So this is my first matrix, which is assigned as a, a red, green, and blue, right? Yeah, good. Yeah, it was uh, blue is equal to a underscore. Uh, yeah, good. So now what is red? Red is this matrix. What is green? Green is the second matrix. And what is blue? Blue is the third matrix. Now, oh, you want to see the image, how it appears? Yeah, you can see. I am showing A underscore resize. I want to see the resized image. You can see the resized image, which, to be, which will be of very uh, small size. Okay. It will take its time to appear. Yeah. Can you see this? image yeah so this is this was the image which was reduced so uh, i guess the shape has been distorted the airplane image has been distorted that is the problem when you try to resize the image when you try to reduce the dimension of the image so it creates distortion it creates noise and most of the uh, properties will be removed most of the properties i say and right? so shape would not be uh, i don't uh, 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 what do you say recommend uh, go with the shape features with the smaller size of the images. Why? Because due to this distortion. Yeah. Now I am showing a underscore resize. Uh, I have a small uh, image. Okay. Let me clear this screen. May, uh, see here. If I I am using the CLC that only clears this command window or clear screen. I still have all my variables intact. You can see in my workspace. I have red. I have green. Okay. I have green, I have uh, blue, right? Uh, I'm just trying to clear the screen, that's it. So I'll be using clear screen. Don't use clear all. If you want to use clear all, make sure that you don't want any of the data which has been stored in those variables. Okay? Now, as I told you, I am trying to work on color mean. So how to evaluate the color means? Can I call another variable called red redm? to signify a red mean and I have a function called mean2. Mean2 is nothing but two dimensional mean. If I want to calculate the mean of a matrix, I'll be using mean2. If I want to calculate a mean of an array, I'll be using only mean. Remember, so if I want to calculate here, my red is a variable which has got, which is a matrix, I'll be using uh, red m in order to calculate the mean of red I have to calculate the mean of green. I would call it as uh, green M. And I'll be calculating blue mean. Blue M is equal to mean 2 of. Just say uh, yes on your chat uh, box. If you are following the question, uh, let me take it. At the end of the session, and now uh, I have uh, said blue is equal to mean two of blue. Yeah, I've calculated red mean. What is uh, the mean value of red matrix? And I've calculated the green value of uh, mean value of green matrix. And I've calculated the blue mean uh, or mean value of the blue matrix. Now I want to put this into an array. Okay, I have red mean, green mean, and blue mean. Uh, can I call it as a feature vector? Okay, I call it as a feature is equal to, I would say, a red M space, green M space, blue M. Uh, right? Uh, but if I want to make it as a column, I can make it as a column. Okay. Uh, feature. So now I'll simply transpose that vector. Okay, I'll simply transport that feature uh, like this. Is it okay? Now, can I say one image which I have started? 
what was that image that was an image of an airplane 2 i underscore 2 v which comprises of three matrices red green and blue i have reduced the size of the image to 10 cross 10 okay i have reduced it to 10 cross 10 and i have extracted color mean that is red mean green mean and blue mean of each matrices and i have stored it as a feature vector this is a feature vector in column remember one image in one column okay image in one column suppose if i read 10 images in a loop okay if i create a loop and if i read 10 images so i could say it is 10 columns of 10 images and now if i am trying to read if i go back to my data set now i'll be reading 1 2 3 4 5 these five images iteratively and if i create a feature vector so what is the length of the feature vector i'll give you 30 seconds of time to put it on the chat box what would be the length of the feature vector so the example i had given for one image it is 3 cross 1 when i have three rows and one column if i am reading five images one two three four five images what would be the length if you have answered it as three cross five so that would be the length of my feature vector database okay why because i have extracted color me and my feature vector database length is three cross five suppose i read five images here from the first category and i go to the second category and again i read five images from second category likewise uh, five images from third category fourth fifth sixth and so on till tenth okay so what would be the length of my feature vector database so the length of my feature vector database would be 50 correct 3 cross 50 where each column signifies one image each column signifies single image and those three rows signifies red green and blue means now i have written a small program uh, the, again i did not mention some, uh, limitations of your command window if you have already used matlab so you'll be knowing the answer for this suppose if i uh, type uh, some commands like this and if i want to go back and edit this command, small command window. Suppose if I want to rename the variable instead of feature, I want to make it as a feature M. I cannot do this on command window. It's not editable. It will not allow me to edit. So what I do, I'll go to uh, the new script window. It's an editor window where I can edit, where I can write the same set of commands and compile and run it on a editor screen. So I go to new script. Click on new script, uh, you'll get a new script window like this. Okay. And here I can type the commands like uh, the most popular commands are CLC, that is clear screen and clear all. Okay. And you can use close all also if you have any figure windows which has been opened due to your previous program. You can make use of a close all. So, how many number of classes I am using here? Can you just say? As an example, I am using number of classes. I am just trying to define a variable uh, no underscore of underscore classes, which is equal to how much? So yes, number of classes is equal to. And can I say a number of classes I am going to read? First five views, first five images under each class. So can I say number of uh, views is equal to five? I hope you're following this. So what is the total number of images that you read? Can I simply say total underscore number of uh, images, which I'm going to read, total number of images, okay? It is equal to what? Do I, uh, you, you want me to write uh, 10 cross five or simply say number of class, classes into number of views directly here. 
So this would be more apt. Why? Because this would generalize the terms. Okay. I hope this is clear now. So total number of images are 50. Number of classes into number of views. Now, as I said, let me start with the training phase. In uh, MATLAB, I'll be using uh, the percentile symbol to comment the statements. So I would say training phase. Is this window visible? I think it maximize this data window. Just say yes or no if this is visible on your screen. Uh, you have to uh, maximize it on your window. Actually, if you are online, just say uh, put it on a chat. No, here on WhatsApp chat. Is it visible or I'll just, uh, okay, fine. Uh, my comments are visible. Okay, fine. All right, so uh, I'll go with the training phase now. So what is training phase? I just want to read my uh, what, the images iteratively. So the, uh, the first and foremost thing is I want to uh, take the path. What is the path? Path is uh, just copy this and uh, uh, make it as a string why? because this path variable is a string now. Okay, so the path is a string. So I'll make it as a string. Just say a single quote string. So this is my path. I'll go to the path. And uh, what is the file name? Okay, remember file name is equal to I'll concatenate this path. S T R C A T. Let me just try to take the file name uh, from. You have uh, the file name here. Yeah. No, it's not present here. So, okay, let me put a file name here. So, what was the file name here earlier in our example? It was I am read. Okay, I am read. Uh, from I am read, I said uh, go to this file and uh, 2i underscore 2v dot jpg. So this is my construction of my file name, right? Okay, you're following this. So, but here, this is my path. So this entire thing is path. Uh, why I'm trying to do this, uh, this situation have, uh, this situation is arise, why? Because I need to read multiple images here. Reading one image, creating uh, uh, that uh, the uh, red, green, blue uh, means column is very easy, but it has to be an iterative process. So the iterative process, uh, what is the only, the variables which is getting changed. This is the these are the variables two underscore two v one i underscore one v to one i underscore five v is the first class two i underscore two v to two i underscore five v is the second class. Likewise, it goes till ten ten class five views. Okay, so this is my path. Can I just try to replace this with path? So I will say string concatenate strcat. Okay, strcat is a function. STRC80, what I do, I say path. So if I say path, the entire path is getting loaded here and ready to concatenate, separated by comma. So whatever comes after comma will be concatenated with this path. Remember, I'll be just typing here. Okay, what is the file name now? File name is equal to this path. What is next? Next, I have 2i. 2 is a variable. Can I say integer to string? Why? Because this is going to get concatenated with the string. I want to call it as int to str. Why? Because I'm trying to convert integer to string of what? Of say i. Okay. Let me, for your convenience, let me define i is equal to 2. Now I guess it is comfortable because I have declared i as an integer value, i is equal to 2, and I am trying to concatenate this 2 with the string of path. So I have to convert it to the string. Otherwise, it's a very basic. You cannot concatenate number or an integer with a string unless and until it is converted. It has been brought to the single format or the same format. So I just say int to str. Now I have this i underscore as a string. I'll be directly concatenating, concatenating it as it is this portion i underscore. And the next. Uh, can I call it as uh, again int to strj? Okay, int to strj. What is int to strj? J is the thing, but again j is equal to two here for this example. 
Is it okay? Can you see the file name which has been constructed so far? The file, if I run this program, you may see, if, if I run this program, okay? If I run this program, you may see the constructed variable for file name, constructed value for file name. Okay, let me uh, save it as a demo. Okay, and I just uh, save it as a demo here. When I run this program, you may see the file name is appeared as, yeah, it's taking some time, uh, kindly bear with this uh, delay. Yeah. Uh, reset the workspace has to get empty yeah can you see this the file name is appearing like monty and uh, slash data set like it's a path so it is simply it is a path where it is converted the integer is converted to a string and it's concatenated with this but v dot jpg is missing here okay so what i need to do go back to the program okay here a v dot jpg it is a string right this is a string so I can uh, uh, concatenate directly as a string. Now try to run this program. Now you can see my file name, it is very much uh, ready to be used in the program. Uh, okay, yeah. And this has to be iterative in process. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, for loop for i is equal to two. No, it is not two for one to what number of classes, right? So it has to iterate from one to 10 classes. Okay. And for J is equal to, it's not two. For J is equal to, it, it has to iterate from one to number of views. Understand? Okay. And since you have used two loops, I have to use the two and one for the outer loop, the second for the in the back so that you can understand uh, the structure uh, with the structure of the programming. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, if you try to run this program, you can see the file names has been iteratively read. You understand? One I underscore uh, five. Oh, sorry. So this has to be from one to five. Okay. So J is equal to one to number of views. Okay. Now you can see the program. So I have read all fifty images. Iteratively, I just read the file names, right? Yeah. Now, what is the next uh, program? Like I have written, uh, let me make it short. I'll just uh, take this, copy this program and paste it here. The same program, the same part of program which we have discussed earlier. Okay. Now you see, I have calculated, see every iteration the first inner loop will be executed. That means it will be in the first class and iteratively it will create go with the five different views. And here I have incremented the count here. So what is count? Count is equal to zero. I just uh, try to create f underscore m as a feature vector, feature matrix. Okay, feature matrix. And I have generated feature matrix of three rows and 50 columns. I have to increment the count here. Let me, it has not been incremented. I have to, because here in the matrix, there is no uh, value for zero and uh, no value for negative. So I have to increment it immediately. Okay. Now I can see, th this is for uh, to increment the columns of feature matrix. The count I used it just in order to increment the columns. See this, uh, the first element inside this F underscore M, it, this is rows. This signifies rows and this signifies columns. Why? Because I'm reading 50 images iteratively. Now, uh, you see F underscore M. Yeah, this is my F underscore M. This is my feature matrix. Let me just try to... Okay. Can you see this F underscore M? What is the size of F underscore M? Let me just check with the size of F underscore M. Those have answered correctly. If I read uh, five images in each class, of each 10 class, so it would be uh, 3 cross 50, where 1, 2, 3 rows signifies uh, red, green, and blue means of uh, any image. Okay, uh, this is one part. This I have completed training. So, what is F underscore M? If I go back to my uh, 
color mean base image retrieval system using MATLAB. I have read images, I have extracted color means, and I have generated feature matrix. I also call it as knowledge database. Okay. And now I will be reading a query image. Okay. Uh, make sure the query image should be the image which should not be present inside the training database. It should be uh, uh, out of the training database. That means it should not be included in your training phase. So what I do, I go to the same program. So now I have done with the training phase. So let me start with the testing phase here or a classification stage. Also, you may call it as classification stage. So it is a testing phase. It needs to be the same. Uh, what I do, I call it as a query. Okay, is it okay? If I call it as a query, uh, I say I am read. Uh, let me copy few of the basic programs here. Okay. Instead of typing, it takes some time. Yeah. I've read it as query image. Okay. I've uh, read the fourth class image and the thirteenth view as okay. Let me just take a second image. Let me say, uh, take a second class and sixth view. Second class and uh, sixth view, which is not present in the database, remember. Or one I underscore sixth view. So this is not present in my database. What I do, I call red Q as a variable in order to compute uh, mean of the red, green, view mean, and create the feature, query feature vector. Okay, I have created query feature vector here. A very si uh, similar process I have adopted in order to extract the color means of my feature image. Now if I go back to the command window and uh, just say uh, F underscore M, this is my feature matrix and F1, this is what? The query feature. So size of F underscore M, that is feature matrix is 3 cross 50 and uh, size of F1, that is feature vector, query feature vector is 3 cross 1. Make sure these dimensions should be same. The number of rows with respect to the feature vector should be the same. That is why I am telling you whatever feature extraction technique that you use during the training phase, Suppose if you have preserved the information of an object with respect to its shape, again, whenever the query formation is formed in your uh, mind or in your brain activity, you, you will be extracting with the same shape features which you have attained or accomplished during your training phase. So make sure that F underscore M and F1 are of same size with respect to the rows, with respect to the feature vectors. Now, after this, again, going back to the slide, what I need to do, I have to measure the distance after generating the third step in the test phase. I have to go to the fourth step, that is distance measure calculation. I have to measure the distance between F underscore M and F1, okay? It's not so easy. You cannot simply say F underscore M and F1, why? Because there are dimensionality conflict. You have to go one by one. You have to take the first column of F underscore M, match it with F1. You have to take second column and you have to match it with F1 likewise. So what I do, I will try to copy it down this program. At the end of this session, let me share this program with your, the coordinator so that uh, you know, they can... Uh, share it with you people and try to execute this basic command. Here I am using Euclidean distance in order to compare, in order to make a comparison or to measure the degree of similarity between in one is M, which is a feature matrix, and the second one is a query feature vector, which is one, which I have created to uh, get the similarity count. Now, if I run this program, I would uh, preserve all the similarity values, all the difference values in Z. Okay. So let me see what is Z here. Yeah, I have Z 
this is the difference obtained okay are you seeing this this is the first value the first difference value which is obtained between f underscore m first column with respect to the feature vector this is the difference obtained between feature vector and the second column of f underscore m this is feature vector and third column feature vector and fourth column likewise feature vector and 50th column now can you tell me where is the least value present inside this z where is minimum of z value i can simply say uh, min of z okay i'll get that min of z as 230.720 230.7278 okay uh, and where it is present it may be present anywhere it is randomized so can i say uh, uh can i sort this and make sure that my z values are appearing in a descending order okay now can you see this sorted value this my entire z values has been sorted uh, luckily uh, <laughs> luckily you are getting the first value at the first place before sort and after sort also okay yeah let just let me change uh, to some other value okay let me change it to 2 underscore 6 we so that i want z value to be sorted and at the different level now if i sort this okay yeah now can you see 2.1025 is before sorting and 0.0279 is after sorting and this 0.0279 is can be appearing uh, yeah where it is 0.0279 Yeah, it's very difficult to find here in 50 data but yeah so if i want to find the index value where it was present so what i can do is i can say uh, i can uh, make two variables let me just clear the screen okay i will create two variables a and b which are unknown to me right now and i shall make the function sort and offset so now i would get a as a sorted value Okay, understand? I will get A as a sorted value. I will clear the screen. What is B then? B is the index value of the least element, lowest element. Okay. So now thirteen. Yeah, good. Now thirteen is present. So A is my sorted value. This is my sorted value. And uh, where is uh, the first value present in? earlier value right? so this would be my 13th value 11 12 13 so this is my 13th index said so what will be my b value the b variable gives me the index value a gives me the sorted values but i am interested in b remember i am interested in b right what is this 13 here just remember what is this 13 13 is can i say 13 is the image belonging to third class and third category am i correct because in my z see this z z consists of what the difference value between f underscore and f1 this is a first image second uh, image third fourth fifth all these five images belong to the first class or the first category so 13 obviously for each class gives you five images so 13 divided by 5 gives me the class value the class label and the remainder of this 13 divided by 5 would give me the v value so what i do i shall just write some commands in order to obtain class value and the v value okay so i'll write this commands in order to obtain i just simply take the first value b1 is nothing but the first value of my sorted index divided by number of views what is number of views number of views is 5 okay so this is number of views and the remainder would give me the v value okay so this is my class value so this would be my class value of query and this would be my v value of query now just uh, will give you some in order to separate with the real class values i am just trying to mention it as underscore 
Q. Okay, yeah, this is fine. So now, uh, if I just uh, run this program, I would be having a class value and the view value. So this is my class value, which has been obtained during retrieval, and this is my view value, which has been obtained during my color mean image retrieval system process. And now, if I want to display, I will use the same uh, concatenation program. I just simply use this displaying. Uh, See this file name retrieved. I would uh, concatenate with the class underscore value underscore q as well as a view underscore uh, value underscore q. This is my retrieved image, and I have already read the query image. I shall show it as a query. This is my query image. I shall show the display it as a query, and this retrieved image I shall display it as a retrieved image. I will use some plot commands here. Due to uh, the time consumption, I'm just trying to reduce my uh, discussions here. So uh, I'll use some uh, plot commands in order to show my query and retried images. And just uh, uh, let me know whether I have retrieved. Yeah, this should be a path. Uh, since I'm trying, I have changed a couple of variables. So this should be what? It's not a source, it's a path in this program. Yeah, it's a path. Yeah, I should get uh, the figure window, which gives me uh, the query image and the retrieved image. Yeah, my color image retrieval system has been totally failed. Why? Because, yeah, obviously the color features are, uh, uh, the color mean features, I'm not telling color features exactly. Uh, red, green, blue mean color features are not recommended to for image retrieval system. Let me try for another image. Okay, uh, let me try for 1i underscore 16 as a query. Yeah, here somewhat okay. Query image matches with the retrieved image. Okay, good. Color images is satisfying this particular query image. Uh, now, if I go with the 3i underscore 13, we just uh, trying to randomly pick the query images. I'm just changing the query values, that's it. Yeah, I have the query image and retried image C. The color, since the color mean were was dominant, uh, it was an anchor image, but I got retired a fish image because of the dominant color of uh, uh, navy blue color here. So this is one uh, disadvantages of color uh, mean or, okay. So this was a small program which I have, uh, which you can write or create in order to execute image retrieval system with respect to a color mean. See, this is the area where you need to change in future. Here, since I have, uh, I, I'll just uh, specify it as a color mean here. And now, you can have your feature, okay? you can have your features representing color, shape, or a texture, okay? This may be the common, the same feature, maybe a combination of color, shape, and texture. Remember, what was the feature length? The feature length was the three values, right? Now, this may be of any value, it depending upon what kind of color descriptors or what kind of feature descriptors you are trying to use. But this is this structure remains same. The only changes what you're going to do here in terms of feature extraction stage, the same thing would should appear here also. Remember, the same should the same thing should appear in the testing phase also. So, whatever feature vector that you're going to generate, depending upon a different content. Here, I have used only red, green, blue means, but it's not recommended. Just as an experimental sake, I have taken this example of extracting color mean. Here, you can extract. Uh, you can use color histogram. You can use histogram of gradients. You can use color moments, you can use shape descriptors, you can use wavelets as features, right? So this feature vector is completely depending upon what algorithm you are using here. You have to uh, write an algorithm here at this place and then uh, make use of the same structure and try to extract the features and try to evaluate your image retrieval system. Here in this case, I have retrieved one image with respect to three query examples. That means I can retrieve one image exactly according to my intentions 
but two failed me. So it, the accuracy is one by three, that is 0.33%, 33% accuracy. Now, if you try to test with the entire Caltech data set, what would be the accuracy? So that is one of the metric which has been used in order to evaluate your image retrieval system. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, this is a simple GUI for uh, IRIS. Uh, if you want me to show, uh, let me just take uh, two or three minutes to just uh, show, yeah. I'll just take two minutes actually, so that uh, uh, it's a simple GUI which uh, has been created. Uh, we shall discuss more about GUI if time permits in the next class. Okay. So this is a GI which has been created. So here also, if you run this GI, for, GI is nothing but uh, it's a small part of functions uh, been created with respect to your user interface. Like you have different push buttons, pop buttons. Uh, yeah, this is my front end GI which has been created. If I give the class value as 10 and number of images as five and just train the image. Uh, one second, uh, just let me check with the path. Yeah, the path is fine, okay. Yeah, so uh, just uh, these are two edit buttons and I have a push button here and here I have an edit string again. So uh, once the images has been trained, so here you can see in the command window the, at the back end the program has been run and once the program is run, yeah, you can see the display number of images been trained is 50. Now you can ask user to test the image so it will ask user to browse to give the query image okay. yeah. yeah it will allow user to uh, browse through the query image so just say if i am to pick an image uh, from my data set uh, go to the data set and uh, just give since i have uh, uh retrieve the sixth image i have given the sixth image here you can see the same output i can make it appear on uh, using gi which is uh, user friendly and you can prompt user to operate according to his needs to select the query image and uh, to uh, give it to the program the program will give, uh, get back you the result you need not to worry about this front end see you can uh, minimize all the windows one second yeah you can just minimize all the windows and you can keep only this uh, ui control uh, function on your entire screen and you can just allow this to uh, allow this uh, allow user to use this ui control okay uh, that ui uh, I, I shall do one thing i shall share this gui program with the uh, coordinators so you can make use of the gui program you can just try to uh, uh, go through the each and every part of the functions inside the program and just try to explore more. You can change some, you try to edit some variables, you try to edit some features and uh, yeah, you can uh, just try to work on that as an experiment. And uh, competitions in CBIR, it is uh, worldwide. A Google landmark retrieval challenge, it is uh, like it's going on, it's present in Kaggle. Uh, like around uh, $5,000, they have kept it as a competition price. And ICFHR 2020 competition on handwritten fragments of historical data, ICDR competition on image retrieval, and ImageNet large scale visual recognition challenge. This is one of the most popular uh, competitions which is held in CBIR. Yeah, you can just uh, try to make a lot of uh, money if you want the prize in this particular competitions yeah it's a very good competitions worldwide and uh, yeah i just uh, thank uh, merge intern and akshay who's a coordinator and merge intern for giving me this wonderful opportunity uh, to present this uh, topic content-based image retrieval system uh, using matlab i hope this was uh, a useful session and uh, yeah, this is a huge topic. I did and learning this topic in one one. It's there are so many things, so many components involved in this. Uh, yeah, uh, just try, try to things. So thank you, and all. Thank you, Akshay, and thank you, Marjinta. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, just let me. Uh,
uh, take it one by one. You can, can unmute your audio and you may ask the questions. Akshay, if you are there online, you, can, you may just read the questions uh, so that because I am unable to connect uh, on YouTube. I just try to, if, if there are any questions, just let me know. Yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. 